there's a tornado vortex of musicianship inside your soul. It's been studied in a laboratory, okay? Remember me if I forget When I was a child We took care of our folks Remember me if I forget Mike's Music Method Come on in, everybody. Another excellent sponsored song by Dusty. Thank you, Dusty. Today we are doing Charlie Parr, Remember Me If I Forget. This song is awesome because we're going to learn, you're going to learn a song in open tuning. We got open G tuning. And you got two options here. You can use a slide. Look at these different slides I have. I don't even play slide guitar, and I have these fancy slides. Um, people gift me them. It's excellent. Or you don't have to use a slide guitar. Charlie Parr, I'm doing the one off the friendship session you can use the slide i'm not very good at slide or you could just play it with your fingers and it still sounds really awesome so a couple things we're going to tackle open tuning a slide if you want to or just using your fingers and this song is fun it's what's really cool about this one is that it's not that complicated to play what's what's complicated about it is how fast it is but playing it slow isn't going to be that hard it is a travic travis picked piece so if you're new to travis picking Check out my playlist, maybe do the first, I don't know, 10 to 12 videos there, and then jump on to this one. But it's not that complicated, and man, is it a lot of fun. This main riff is so cool. If you guys don't know this song, go check it out now. Check out um, Charlie Parr's, um, him playing it live at the Friendship Session. And then we are going to do this. If you're new to Mike's Music Method, we just do a measure by measure breakdown. Each measure, I'm showing you what fingers to use, how Charlie is doing it exactly how he's doing it. I know everyone is at a different skill level, so the timestamps down below are going to be your best friend. Jump ahead, go back, whatever you need to do that's appropriate for you. And at the very end of the video, if you look at the timestamps, I do slow run-throughs of each section of the song. So maybe once you get the first four or eight measures down, jump to the end of the video and play along with those measures really slow with me. So that is the best way to learn with these videos is to be going back and forth. And remember guys, boom! Mike'sMusicMethod.com. All of these tabs are free. Unbelievable. The value for value model. More on that later. And remember to sign up for my mailer. I give out all sorts of cool little freebies and just keep you up to date on cool musical stuff. So sign up for that. And please, if you want to, join the Discord because I'm always giving people feedback. We're, we're posting videos. We're sharing ourselves, learning songs and what we're struggling with. And a lot of people are on there giving feedback. It's a great way to get some critique and feedback and tips on how to improve your playing. And then of course, as always, the weekly Thursday Zoom meetings where I'm there live, not in the flesh, but in the digital flesh. And um, we just kind of talk music, but I will also answer your questions if you have some on those Zoom meetings. Without further ado, Charlie Parr's Remember Me If I Forget. Let's do it, you're gonna learn it. Yeah, bing. Open G, let's get the tuning out of the way here. This is, we're gonna drop our E to a D. But actually, you don't have to because he never plays that string. I do, just in case you miss it, you want it to be harmonious and the D is going to sound a lot better. But he actually never plays this string. So it's up to you. If you want to drop it to a D, you can. Then we have the A gets dropped down to a G. The D stays a D. The G stays a G. The B stays a B. And then the high E goes down to a D. So when all is said and done, you get a beautiful G major chord. It's just G. B and D's, that's it. As I said in the beginning, guys, I am not a slide player, but he's using the slide. Charlie does it on his pinky. Some guys do the ring finger. I don't, I don't spend a lot of time doing it. I don't have a resonator guitar. It sounds ridiculous on a nylon. Um, that's up to you. It'll be fine on a steel string or an electric, but I'm just gonna use my fingers because I do not love the slide guitar. Um, sure, when other people play it real well, it's awesome, but it's just not my thing. 
So keep that in mind when we do this song. Now the first four measures, he's just going back and forth between the fifth string and the third. So A to D. And it's pretty quick. So one thing you can do before you even begin this song is just get that going. So I'm doing thumb, 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 pointer, thumb. Or you can just practice thumb, pointer, thumb. Go back and forth all the time. What you're trying to do is just spend some time, not messing up, but you're spending some time right on that cusp of like you're about to tense up, right? You want to stay relaxed. Thumb pointer, thumb pointer. And then occasionally burst that speed. Back to down again. Burst the speed, back to down. And just be playful with that. Um, and you can kind of just mess around. I'm practicing and this is like deliberate practice you want to be specific about what you're practicing but also to like um, combine it with other things right you want to link it with other things you're practicing so maybe that's just like getting used to improvising right every couple notes I'm just changing my finger to a different note in the scale and you're gonna have to figure that out too like is it that one that's certainly not major so you can play around with that and then do the same thing with the middle finger or maybe I'm doing Thumb middle on the first string, then thumb on the third. Five, one, three, one. And I'm just practicing that same idea with my middle finger. Then you can alternate thumb pointer, thumb middle. And we're just trying to get that pattern up to speed. Not only is this great for this song, but I do want to do a whole Travis picking ebook at some point. I know, strum it like a cowboy. I promise it's coming, guys. <laughs> but I want to get into these ideas where I'm doing like interactive ebooks. And this would be one of the most basic things, is just get good at some of these common patterns. Right, we're not doing a super involved melody, but we want this to be fast, and we want it to have the muscle memory down. So that's something you're gonna wanna to practice too. All right, onward now to the actual song. In measure five, after that just little beginning part where he's establishing what's happening, we go way up to the 12th fret. Now, I'm not using the slide, I'm going to have the ring finger on 12, and then in the moment, my middle finger is going to be playing the 12 on the next string. So I got the E string and the B string, both playing 12. And what we have here, thumb alone, then I'm pinching 3 and 1, and I'm doing thumb and middle there. So thumb on 5, pinch 3 and 1, thumb and middle. Second half of the measure is thumb on 5 again, pointer on the second string and then thumb on three. Thumb, pointer, thumb, thumb, pointer, thumb, five, two, three. Put that measure together, three, four. Okay, this is a really technical thing I'm talking about here, okay? Stop laughing. Measure six, same idea, just syncopating, changing up the rhythm a little bit here. We're pinching five and one with thumb and middle, thumbs alone on three. Then I'm pinching five and two with thumb and pointer, then thumbs alone on three. So now we have them pinched on downbeats. So if we do five and six together, three, four, thumb, pinch, thumb, pointer, thumb, pinch, One thing I'm going to note, if you're not using a slide, in order to get that like cool sound, you're going to want to heavily vibrato it, right? I'm constantly tugging, um, this is a common misconception, like there's two ways to vibrato. One is kind of the rock and roll way, which you're doing like a mini bend, either up or down or both. But the classical vibrato is actually um, across a horizontal plane. So I'm pushing this way to tighten the string, or sorry, to loosen the string rather, and then I pull back that way to loosen it. Right, and step back and forth. So what is hitting my guitar and making that noise? So that's the vibrato you wanna be going for, kind of back and forth across this plane, horizontally. Measure seven. 
get a little slide in here. So I'm gonna release that ring finger, or sorry, rather the middle finger that was on the second string, and I'm gonna pinch five and one, and that 12 is gonna slide up to a 14. Now here, I, I call it like a compound movement, I don't know how else to think about it. When I'm sliding that 12, right when it gets to the 14 is when I'm playing the third string with my thumb. So because it's a slide, you know, you're hearing that 13th fret in there, right? I don't want you to stop on it, but in other words, it, it's not like the slide is instantaneous, right? That slide really exaggerates it. Sorry. And then the measure ends, we go back to 12 and we pinch five and one, and then the thumb alone. So it looks the same. It's just this with the right hand. Right, pinch five and one, thumb alone on three, five and one, thumb alone on three. Except we have the slide in there. Measure eight, I'm gonna put the middle finger back down on the 12th fret of the second string, the B string, and I'm gonna pinch five and two, then thumb alone on three, and then I do five, two, three. Now you have two options here. In the tab, and I'm not sure, he, he does this riff so many times in the song that there's some variation but the easiest way is to so we have that five and two thumb alone on three and then we're going to do five two three and you can do it all open in preparation for getting way down to this fifth fret so the whole measure is then pinch lift it thumb and thumb but it's up to you as you get better at playing it you might you can hold down that 12th fret then, you know, you'll, you'll eventually get be able to get down to the fifth fret. But if you want to take your time, and he is doing this in the song, I don't know about every time, but certainly quite a few times I'm hearing it, where he's lifting that chord up early. Right, it doesn't matter. This, this 12th fret is a B, and this open is a B. It's the same note. So you can get away with it either way. The way I have it written is to lift it. donation pitch guys the value for value model please consider it to all my patrons huge hugs you guys are rocking it making these videos possible buying me time to make them so here at mike's music method if you don't know already i have no paywall literally all my content is free for you guys i have over 250 videos on this channel i have way more than 100 tabs on my website and they are all top-notch free tabs, way better than Ultimate Guitar. I mean, read the comments down below. You, if you guys are watching this far in the video, you already know that. I painstakingly sit there with my headphones, you know, play five seconds of it, rewind, play five seconds, put it in slow motion, play five seconds, and I obsess, and I get try to get every note as, as accurate as I can. And I'm pretty good at it. I've been doing it a long time. So I labor over that and generate these tabs. These videos take a long time to record and edit. And I assure you, just because I'm on YouTube doesn't mean YouTube is giving me a lot of money. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, I make about 130 bucks a month from YouTube. And this is like collectively, you guys don't know how many hundreds of hours I've put into this channel to make like 100 bucks a month. My wife laughs at me telling me like, you know, basically getting slave labor. Um, but I'm not really comparing it to that. It is obviously a great joy. And obviously it is reaching, ton, I mean, tens of thousands of people. The channel has over a million views. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is please, it is the value for value model. If you value the channel, give some value back. That is going to be your time, talent, or treasure. Maybe you become a monthly donor through Patreon or PayPal or um, you know Venmo me. All the info is down below. You can snail mail, snail mail me a check at my P.O. box and I'll send you a Malaro family Christmas card at the end of the year. How about that for a deal? Um, but, but that's it, guys. I want to keep this free. So for those of you who can donate, it's your donations that are keeping this free for, for hundreds of other people. So even if there's only an awesome like 3 to 7% of you who donate, guess what? The, by you guys paying, you're keeping it free from everyone else who, for everyone else who can't afford it. 
And I promise you guys, there are, I'm getting like 100 unique visits to my website every day, pretty much, of people downloading these tabs. So I know that I'm doing good work and a lot of people are getting a great education. But if, if I don't get enough support, I'll be honest, I'll never stop doing these videos. <laughs> but it, it will slow down, right? What I want to do is, is have support for more people so it buys me more time to focus on this channel so I could do less of my actual day job and you're basically buying me time to make more of these videos. I'm being long-winded. I always am with don this donation pitch. I wish I could look you in the eye right now and express it. Everyone who's donating, thank you so much. If you're getting value from this channel, come on, it's kind of like the honor system. If you have the means, if you're broke, don't worry about it. You know, if you're broke, <laughs> keep consuming it for free. That's the whole point of the value for value model. But for you guys who can prioritize, even if it's, I don't know, five bucks a month, do you have 50 bucks a month to spare? It's up to you. That's the beauty of the value for value model. And end donation pitch, you guys get it. Onward with the video. Measure nine. We are gonna slide up, because we're in open G, you can just play your five chord here, that ends up being a D, and then your C chord is here in the fifth fret, which is really cool about open tunings. All your major chords now are just barred. And with a slide, you can see how easy that is because you just, it's so easy to play major chords all over the neck that way. But what he's doing here, we're gonna play the fifth and slide it up to the seventh. And I'm, uh, I'm not quite fully in the bar yet, but right after I slide, I'm immediately gonna then boom, apply the pressure down for the bar chord. But don't feel like you have to slide the bar because that is exhausting. So I've got my fingertip down, but my I'm, you can see it looks like the bar, but I'm not actually putting pressure anywhere but on that fingertip. And then once I slide, that's what I'm kind of squeezing down right afterwards. So I'm sliding from five to seven, then I hit the third string with my thumb, to the first string with my middle. Thumb, middle. Five, three, one. Then the second half of the measure is back to five, and then it's two with a pointer. Three. So the whole measure together, three, four. measure 10 we simply drop it down and we pinch five and one thumb goes to three and that's it so this might throw you off but it's one of these cool folk things I mentioned this in quite a few different songs Dylan does it all the time towns occasionally hurt um, where now we just have this little measure of two beats instead of being four four it's one two and that's it so it's just an extra two beats and then we're, we're back to four four so that might feel weird and then into one, two, three, four again. Uh, so really slow, nine and ten, three, four. Drop it. Yeah. Then measure eleven on the top string. I'm going to slide from seven to nine. So I'm pinching uh, five and one. And when I slide the nine, I'm hitting the third string with my thumb. We stay there. Got this little staggered rhythm. Thumb and thumb. Pinch, thumb. So the string sets are five, one, three at the beginning. Thumb, middle, thumb. The second half of the measure is pinch, five and one. Then thumb alone. So from the seven to nine slide and measure 11 here. Three, four. Guys, that honestly is about half the song already. The verse, um, we're gonna do a second ending here, but then the verse is almost exactly the same as this intro. So we're gonna finish the second half of the intro, but it's all the same. So 13 is the same as the beginning of the intro, uh, which was measure five, I think. With a slide. 17 is the same as whatever that other one was, nine, I think. slide to five to seven, move it down. But then the last two measures are different here. So 
15 and 16 are now going to be replaced by these two, uh, 19 and 20. And so he's just ending the phrase differently. And here we end it here. Really easy. I'm just doing the fifth fret on the high E string, pinching five and one, thumb on three, and then we stagger that five, one, three. So let's do that measure a couple times. Three, four, pinch, thumb, thumb, middle, thumb, thumb pointer, thumb, thumb, middle, thumb. Easy enough. And then we end it on a 20 here, just pinch. And then the thumb does it alone. Yeah, isn't this one fun? Oh, I knew it would be fun. Now guys, I am not a slide player at all, so you can laugh at me here. This is what it sounds like when I try to use one of these awkward things on my nylon. Um, but just to give you an idea of what it, what he's doing, right? So he's at the beginning, he's kind of sliding into that 12, to be honest. And you can do that without it. You can just like slide from the 10 to the 12. Now that I'm like putting in context, I'm hearing that a little bit. But we've got a uh, three, four. get the idea it sounds horrible on this nylon and I don't play it very well that's the idea you can also just replicate it with your fingers uh, so guys here's a little alternate part that when Charlie gets really excited he starts doing it's basically that main intro thing but with two kind of slight modifications happening and this will be at the end of our tab here in measure 46 so the first thing he does I know sometimes what I like to do is slide into that 12 on the second beat so I'm just pinching 10 instead of 12 and sliding into it. But here he starts with a pinch on the second string. So I've got the 10th fret on the second string and I'm sliding into 12. And I'm doing that with my middle finger. So I'm pinching five and two, pointer and a thumb. And then everything else is as follows after that 10 to 12 slide. Right all the same. And here it's a little different, and this is why in the beginning of the video, if you remember, I told you you can do it two different ways, and, and this is why you'd want to do it the second way. Instead of doing five open, three, instead of doing all those open, you would keep those 12 down there, the 12's down, and you'd end it that way. But not only are you going to end it that way, you're doing this kind of like, I don't know that there's a word for it, it's just like a nondescript slide, he's just coming out of it. So there's really no ending fret. I just start sliding and then gradually release the pressure on my left hand so it kind of fades out at a nondescript point. And so that last measure is going to be... I know when I'm playing all of it, it's hard to hear. And he's doing that because then he's getting, he's moving his slide down to the fifth fret. So let's do that one more time from the top of those four, four measures there. Two, three, four, slide. Keep the 12 down, slide out of it. Go to the end of the video, make sure you got that down, play along with slow run through intro and do that a bunch of times. But the good news is, is the verse is basically the same, and then you're going to have the whole song done. So let's do this. Measure 21 in your free tab at mikesmusicmethod.com. The verse, he's just banging out those five threes again. Then he goes to seven without the slide. So measure 25, it's um, the thumb is doing five, three, then to your middle finger on the first string. Right, that's the first half of the measure. Second half is thumb and thumb, and that's the pointer finger there. So five, two, three. So the whole measure, three, four. Then we drop it down to the fives again. As the same before, just a pinch, five and one, then three alone. And here we end it the same way, where he slides from seven to nine. Then he lifts it at the end. So seven to nine slide from measure uh, 27. Then 
we pinch here, and then it's five, two, three. And that's just so he can, I don't know why he does it, but he does, just sounds cool. I have that little note in there. No chordal reason, because then in 29, we just stay open all the way until we get to 33. Same idea, we do those sevens down to the five. That's all the same, and then he ends it like he ended the intro. We got onto the fifth fret here. But the verse here extends that ending a little bit longer. So let's look at 37 here. And this part's, I really like this part a lot. So we have a little staggered rhythm again. So 37 is thumb, then we pinch three and one. Then we stagger it, five, one, three. So again, thumb, pinch on the third. But what's really cool is when you put all those different rhythms together, starting in measure 35, 3, 4. And remember to practice your vibrato there too. 3, 4. And when you get it fast, it sounds really awesome. That'll be the entire verse. Go to the timestamps again, loop that, make sure you got it. We will put the lyrics to it momentarily, but let's get our coda. Here's the coda. He's just tagging that line, remember me if I forget, doing this uh, little riff here. So measure 40, I'm sliding from that fifth fret to the seventh. But here we actually do have to slide our entire finger. And there's where the slide makes it a little bit easier, but it's totally doable too. You just can really develop that kind of bar grip strength here. So I'm pinching five and two on five on the fifth frets. I'm sliding it up to seven. Then the thumb hits three, and then the middle finger hits one. Then the second half of the measure is five, two, three. So the whole measure, three, four. If you're on a steel string, it's gonna hurt a bit more than it does on the nylon, so get used to that. And then 41, we go back to the bar where we just were, pinch five and one, threes alone, then we lift that up. And here it's weird because there's not that extra two beats. I mean, there is, it, it depends kinda how you think it, but, but let's do that measure again. We're pinching five and one, three alone. Pinching five and one again, but I'm, I'm just doing the fifth fret down here now. Right, I don't need it on the fifth string anymore. So. The interrupted ending, but then he just does one, two, three, four. And then he repeats that little section again. So we'll, we'll do the whole thing, three, from uh, 40, three, four. time let's finish it off and again we'll put the words in soon uh, 43 slide so that one was exactly the same as 40 this is the same as 41 so it's really only 45 that he does at the ending of the song he slides from 10 to 12 and he pinches 5 and 1 and that 10 to 12 is on the high E and here this is what we're gonna do without the slide we're gonna hit 11 on the second string and bend it up to 12, release it, bend it, and then hold it back up there. Uh, I know on the nylon it's quiet, but uh, I'm bending the 11th fret on the second string, releasing it. But you wanna, the trick here is I'm sliding with my ring finger. Oops, sorry. Oh, the string. <laughs> so 10 to 12 slide, I'm pinching five and one. I'm gonna let that 12 keep ringing out here. I know 
it's quiet on my nylon, but you get the idea. And what he's doing really is he's just playful on that, um, right? He's getting that slide in there. When we don't have the slide, we have to bend it. She sounds horrible. Right, he's getting that. So I'm trying to mimic that by doing this. Right, sliding that a little bit, or bending it rather. You guys got it. Do the slow run throughs and then we were gonna put it in context with some of the lyrics. Man, I told you this one would be fun. Gah! Thank you, Dusty. All right, let's sing to it. Now, first off, what I do when I start singing is I don't obsess on the tab. I have a general idea of what the verse looks like and what chords I'm gonna do. You know, you might not have all the exact rhythms down. That's fine. What we want to do here is focus on singing it properly and getting a rough outline of, of how to do that with our guitar. Okay, so this song's too high for me, <laughs> so bear with me. But we got this. That first verse. Have I lived my whole life for it to come down to this? Remember me if I forget. Oh, sorry, that should have been if I forget. First time he slides from seven to nine. When I was a child, we took care of our folks. Remember me if I forget. That is basically the entire tune. So maybe at first, if that's difficult for you, um, don't worry about anything but the thumb. I've lived my whole life for it to come down to this. Remember me if I forget. When I was a child, we took care of our folks. Remember me if I forget. You kind of got to scream this one, don't you? <laughs> To get it, it's a uh, high and like into that nasally, uh, like really forward piercing quality to it. My great, my my old buddy, great old friend Joe Sundell. I'll see if he's on YouTube. I'll link to him. He, I met him. He played in my old band when I was in Austin, Malaro for Illinois. If you guys haven't checked out my music, it's on all your streaming services, Malaro for Illinois. But Joe played banjo on the record, and I met Joe. Um, I went to the farmers market with my wife right when we moved to Austin. And I was like two blocks away. We had parked the car and I'm like, man, what? That's live music. He sounded like, um, what's the dude's name? Lead Belly. I was like, man, what is this? Like, yeah, this projection, this strong voice. And then sure enough, as we get closer, you know, I see him and it's this guy sitting on, on a kick drum with his banjo left-handed. Just, man, playing the Southern part to a T. And we were still like a block, you know, not a block away, but you know what I mean? 50 yards and I, I looked at my wife and I'm like, I'm gonna get that guy to join my band. <laughs> and sure enough, I met him, he was a great guy and we ended up playing music together. So check out Joe Sundell's music, it is awesome. If you like Charlie Parr, I think you will, will, you will like Joe as well. He's a fantastic songwriter, an excellent picker. And check out his banjo playing on my record, Malaro for Illinois, available on all the streaming services. It's a self-titled one that Joe plays on, not the second one. So that's it. The whole verse repeats like that. Once you get good at just doing the thumb, then you can try to incorporate all the notes that Charlie is actually doing. <sighs> Unbelievable. We did it, guys. We freaking did it. You are excellent. I knew you would do it. I told you this song was fun. Do those slow run throughs together with me and over time, slowly build up the speed. Here's a practice note before we do the slow run throughs. Two ways to do this. One, is what I said. You just want to like occasionally bump it up, go back down slow. And the other one is to pick a tempo where maybe you can do it for a minute and you're only going to make like a mistake or two and just stay at that tempo for a while. So that, what you're doing there is like you, you can divide it up like if you're relating it to a workout. That's like your endurance work, right? Your, your, your cardio, where you're just trying to keep it at a really good clip where you're rarely making a mistake. But then you want to do, you know, like your, your sprints or whatever, where you're taking a break and your break might just be at a slower speed than your cardio. But then, right, quick little sprint, bring it back down. 
Another thing that I really like to do that I think is overlooked is play around with dynamic. There's something that gets your whole central nervous system firing and your fingers get more finely attuned and you just become a, a more expressive player when you mess around with dynamic. So can you play something at this speed loud? Can you get to a medium? It's hard not to slow it down as you get softer. Can you play quietly? Right back to loud. Right back to quiet. And gradually ramp it up. It's a lot of work. It's a surprisingly a whole bunch of work, but I swear it does something to your central nervous system where these things get to muscle memory quicker because you're experiencing them at different um, degrees on that spectrum. Again, it's, it's like working out. You can do a push-up like uh, at speed. You can do one super fast and explosive. You can do like a static hold. You can do like an isometric. Um, you know what I mean? I, what, what all these fancy workout words are. But it's the same kind of thing. It's going to work your, your muscles and your nervous system in different ways. And I think it's, it's just broader and it's going to help you learn this stuff quicker. Okay? This is a really technical thing I'm talking about here, okay? Stop laughing. What I'm talking about here is there's this swirly thing that happens inside your body like a tornado, okay? And if you get the tornado going fast and slow at a, a forte, mezzo forte, fortissimo, then you take it down to piano, okay? There's a tornado vortex of musicianship inside your soul. It's been studied in a laboratory, okay? And I swear, it's, it makes you a better player. I'm so mad at you that you're not taking me seriously. Up close and personal for the slow run-throughs. All right, we're going to do it from the top, and we're just going to run through the whole intro here. One, two, three, four. So I, I couldn't help but get fancy and I threw in some slides there, but let's do it one more time exactly as written in the tab. Um, what I was doing was just starting by sliding from 10 to 12 instead of just starting on the 12. But let's do it as written here. One, two, three, four. If you're on a de desktop or laptop, you can go to the gear icon, change the speed. But when you're on one of those devices, you can also go to custom up on top. And then if you want it slower, you can do like 0 0.95, 0 0.9, or if that's too slow and you don't want to do it with Charlie, that you can jump it up to like point, you know, 1.1, 1.2, 1.35, whatever you need. So play with that and get a lot of practice in. All right, let's run through the verses. Measure 21 here. One, two, three. Four.
come along with some lyrics. It would be one, two. Let's do the coda. So the very last time when he sings that remember me, instead of doing it, which would be like measure 33, right? Remember me if I forget. Instead of doing that, we're just gonna, the very last time, so you'd replace 33 with um, 40 and you'd have remember me if I forget. And then repeat it, remember me if, so let's do that from 40 together, one, two, three, four. Remember me if I forget. Remember me if I forget. Remember me if I forget. I think I did it too many times, but the very last time, so this would be a 43 in the tab. Remember me if I forget. I think I got the rhythm wrong. I forget how he slows down at the end there. But that's the idea. So let's go 41, 40, 43 one more time. Two, three, four. Hey, stop laughing. What I'm talking about here is there's this swirly thing that happens inside your body like a tornado, okay? And if you get the tornado going fast and slow at a, a forte, mezzo forte, fortissimo, then you take it down to piano.